The Kemp's Ridley's, uh, this is a species that was nearing an extinction event. By 1985, there were maybe three or 400 of these things left. This species almost went extinct within a blink of an eye, and we know it was human activities that caused the decline without question. They're the smallest of the sea turtles. They're only found in a very small part of the world. It doesn't take a lot of human interaction to probably destroy it. The Kemp's Ridley's uh, a binational program to recover it, uh, this endangered species is probably one of the most uh, successful I've ever been, uh, participated with. And it's one of the most involved and difficult. I mean, in 1947 or so, there were 120,000 of these turtles that would come ashore uh, and nest, many of them 30 or 40,000 at a time. And this program basically saved that species' life. For many years, it wasn't known where Kemp's Ridley's nest. It was a mystery. It wasn't until 1960s, Dr. Henry Hildebrand discovered a film that was uh, shot by a Mexican engineer that showed an estimated 40,000 Kemp's Ridley females nesting on this small stretch of beach near the village of Rancho Nuevo in Tamaulipas, Mexico. When biologists began to go to the beach, however, they found that the numbers of turtles nesting had declined tremendously. Well, you have to understand too, well, well I can, particularly in, uh, all on the, the uh, nesting beaches, it's a pretty poor area. They could get a dollar an egg, and then the turtle cells could feed the family for a week. It was pretty important. And, and trying to get people to want to conserve and not consume was a major undertaking. There was a lot of years where not much survived that came on the beach. The decline was uh, so precipitous in the, in the 1970s, they came up with the concept of forming a secondary nesting colony of Kemp's Ridley turtles at Padral National Seashore so that if a political or an environmental catastrophe was to occur at that main nesting beach down in Mexico, there'd be this safe area in the U.S. where Kemp's Ridley's could nest and be protected. It started small as a concept in the 1970s where we received eggs, 22,507 eggs from Mexico. We had the first confirmed returnee from this project that I saw here in 1996, 10 years after we began our first patrols looking for returns from that project. Okay, there's the egg cavity with the eggs. So there's about 100. One thing we found out years and years ago, from the years we started stocking or releasing at least 100,000 hatchlings a year, uh, you can start to see the population build. So in the years we were getting up to like a million or close, I mean, we know we had some giant, giant impacts then. What accelerated this recovery of this species more than anything else, all the science that we did, all the volunteers we had have had a positive impact, but this one thing has done more to recover Kemp release tea turtles than anything else and that's Viagra. They used to say, a turtle egg and a shot of tequila and I'm ready to go. I mean, that was, that was what was reality. And it was to the point where there was a time when they actually backed up 18-wheel tractor trailers into the edge of the dunes and were loading turtle eggs on as fast as they collected. That's really what, that's really what almost destroyed, over that period of time, almost destroyed it. And so they literally put out posters with women in lingerie holding a Viagra pill and a, a turtle egg and saying, this will do more than this, but it apparently worked because all of a sudden, all of our efforts down in Mexico with our partners there to save uh, eggs, they started bearing fruit. Today we're here at Padre Island National Seashore. We have a large group of people here today, all excited to come out and support the sea turtles and see the return back into the Gulf. Take a picture. Take a picture. All right, smile.
than you. So cute. Even tinier than you are. <laughs> so cute. He is really cute. Oh, they're sounding like babies. They are little babies. He's only a couple hours old. The public has always been involved in, to some extent in our releases of Kemp's Ridley Hatchlings at Padre Island National Seashore. With the advent of social media, then the message is spread and our attendance at these releases really shot up. So now it's typically hundreds to more than a thousand people. We hold about, about 20 public releases each year, sometimes more than that, sometimes a little less. It all depends on the schedule of the turtles. When I see the BBC turtles, they are just the culmination of everything that we have done this year. That is our success story, that we were able to protect them from eggs into developing hatchlings. And once they hit the water and go back out into the Gulf of Mexico, it just warms my heart. And you hear a great cheer come up from the audience, and it's a really cool uh, scene to be a part of. That's it. <laughs> We're really thrilled because great strides have been made. The numbers nesting here have increased dramatically. But we haven't won the game, so to speak. It's going to take more years of effort to fully recover the species. Uh, this last 40 years has frankly been remarkable. When you think back in 1985, there were literally 300 of these animals possibly left alive. Uh, and now, uh, and I think it was 2011, uh, about, about this time of year, uh, almost 4,000 Kemp release turtles came up on the beach. That was the first time that had happened since 1947. So to go from almost gone to on the road to recovery is remarkable. I, I don't know of any other species that we've done that for anywhere in this country.